The following is a presentation of the Rowan Television Network. It is a cold, chilly day here on the campus of Rowan University. 42 degrees to be exact here at Richard Wagner Stadium. And the Rowan University Profs will be taking on the TCNJ Lions, who are 2-7 and seven on the year. The Profs, on the other hand, are 3-6, and six, and this is their final game of the season. Hi there everyone, my name is Jason Joseph, and right next to me is uh, Nas Nasir Nichols, my buddy right here. How you guys doing? <laughs> Nasir, you know, we t looking at the last game that the props had, they were down 20-7, to and they ended up coming back and winning and scoring 20 points in the third quarter, 27-20. to What was really remarkable to you about that run? I feel like Rowan did a good job of balancing their offense. I feel like the running game, they did a good job in it, and also their passing game, they also did a good job. Yeah, and we talk about the quarterback, uh, Mike Husney, who threw two touchdowns late in that third quarter. He was really t uh, tremendous. Uh, how is he, how is he, talk about his success. Yeah, Mike Husney has been doing a good job this season. This season, he's only had nine picks, and I feel like a key to their success this season is them exposing that pass game. And then we talk a little bit about the running game. Messiah Divine, one of the best runners in the end, Jack. He ran for at least 70 yards in his last game, and he's been incredible as well. Yeah, I feel like they're having a good job with their running game. He also has three touchdowns on the season. I feel like they give him some touches today. He could come up clutch at the end. And then taking a look at TCNJ on the other side, Andrew Donahue, the last game that they played, they lost to Salisbury 62-20, to and Salisbury's now 9-0 on the season. But Andrew Donahue threw for two touchdowns. He completed at least 27 passes. And, you know, he's been he's been one of the best quarterbacks in the end, Jack. Yeah. So on the season, TCJ has taken more of a passing approach. Pretty much, I've looked at all his stats, and throughout the season, they have no running back who has had a touchdown this season. All four of their rushing touchdowns have come from the quarterback position. Yeah, and their running game has not been at their best, just like you said this year. But hopefully today we see a lot of action between both teams on the on the offensive end. Let's talk a little bit more about the defensive end between both of these teams. You know they really have to step it up in this game. Yeah, for TC and J especially, they're averaging 13 about 13 points on offense, and they're giving up about 30 on defense. So it's going to be tough to see how their defense plays today. And finally, we talk about the matchup between both of these teams. Both teams against e or against each other. The props have won 25 games and they've lost seven games to TCNJ. The last game that they played last year, uh, uh, they won, and that was by a score of 19 to 13. But this game is going to be really here on the campus of Rowan University. My name is Jason Joseph, and alongside me is Nasir Nichols. Rowan will receive the ball. Elijah Ram uh, just had himself a little carry. They're at the 40-yard line. It is really so chilly. Yeah, it is. How you guys um, It's nice to be here. Um, we're going to see Ron get to touch the ball first. And it's going to be interesting to see how these offenses turn out. And Mike Husney is going to run that for Mike a first Husney down. An 11-yard carry for Mike Husney. He has just been tremendous on the season for the Roman University Browns. How about throwing for two big touchdowns in the last game that led the props to victory after being down 20 to 7 against Christopher Newport University. Husney will give it to Messiah Devine, and that will be for about a four yard carry. Yeah, we see a little bit of the offense trying to get the run game established, so that'll be pretty interesting to see how this game goes on. on the tackle. Yeah, the Eight running the game yard, for the props have been uh, sensational this year. If we look at their rushing yardage, they've gained 1,594 yards and have only given up 1,220 yards to their opponents. So Messiah Devine and the whole running game has just been sensational. Here comes Mike Husney. He is going to get himself a first down. Mike Husney, the ball carrier. Mike Husney doing a lot of running so far and a lot of action. Yeah, they open with, with the first three plays is a run, so he does a good job on the offense so far. Third and two. It's actually going to be third and two. So he only gained seven yards. The 
drops from Archon down the field. Osni will give it up to Devine. Devine will absolutely get himself a first Devine down. Carries. Messiah Devine has just been sensational this year for the Rowan University props. How about well, how about the third? According to the NJAC rankings, he's the third best running First back down, in Rowan. the NJAC. Looks like Mike Hosny will get himself Last another first down. Sean yeah, Rowan did a good job of opening up the first couple of plays with, with running plays. You see that that running game is starting Joey to open up the off the, the pass game as well. And they gotta love the action That's between John Maldonado down. and Mike Hosny as they have a really good chemistry together. The Maldonado getting himself line. another uh, first down and the props are now at the 25 yard line. And then on the other hand, talking about TCNJ, they lost 62 to 20 in their last game against Salisbury University. TCNJ had 24 receptions and 184 receiving yards, um, but they gave up 271 receiving yards to Salisbury, and the defense just wasn't good enough. Yeah, Salisbury, you talk about one of the best teams in the NJAC right now. Um, to keep up with them, your defense has to play up to stand it. And they didn't do that that well last game. Messiah Devine, the ball carrier. Devine getting himself a few on the more tackle. yards. Gain of two on the play, second and eight. Well, this is, their, this is their first possession, and they're already marching down the field, and it's their last game of the season. And you just gotta love the action that the props have shown so far as Mike Husney will run it out of bounds at the 10 yard Mike line. Mike Husney carries. Yeah, Ron did a good, does, is doing a good job of getting to the red zone on the first possession of the game. It'll be interesting to see how many points they put over the score that one time. Forced out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Now there's 11 minutes and 36 seconds to go. Already four six. minutes have gone by, and the props are just in control so far. It is senior day. It is the last day, or excuse me, the last game of the season. So all, all the seniors are gonna be graduated as they had a little ceremony before the game started to congratulate them and wish them good luck. Messiah Devine is going to be sacked Messiah and Devine that is going to be carrier. fourth down and Jake Hurler the kicker for the Roman University props Anthony will be coming in yeah I'm pretty sure this is not the trip they wanted to have they wanted, this is not what they wanted to have and they wanted to go down the field and probably score a touchdown but as long as they get out. some points on the, the scoreboard that's all that matters and Mike Husney doing a nice job yards. just to get Jake Hurler to come in put themselves in field goal range. And the kick by Hurler is good. And the kick is good. 10.40 Now the props are up three to nothing. With 10 minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. And taking a look at the NJAC standings, Salisbury is six and zero as they are leading the NJAC conference. Wesley is five and one. Montclair State four and two. Rowan, how about them? They're three and three in the NJAC. Kane University is two and four, and TCNJ is also two and four. So if TCNJ were to win today, both teams would be tied. In the end. If the props were to win, they would be, they would get themselves their fourth win of the season. And Nasir, you know, my cousin, he couldn't get himself a touchdown, but running down the field was pretty much their game plan throughout the first, throughout that whole first possession. Yeah, I feel like Rowan's doing a good job trying to control the tempo of the game. That's pretty much what they need to do to secure the win today. Um, it'll be interesting to see how TCNJ responds after giving up those three points on that drive. And we're going to see if they're going to stick with the passing like they have all season or are they going to try to establish some type of running game. Shelby Bellamy on the return. 
And now Valley on the return. Bellany, excuse me, the wide, the freshman wide receiver, five foot seven from Piscataway, New Jersey. there's a personal foul that is called. I believe that it'll be on the offense. Well, we talked a lot about the quarterback for this team, Andrew Donahue. Six foot two, he's in his uh, third year. He's from Ocean City, New Jersey. Uh, one of the best running backs in the back end, Jack. After coming off of a 42 point loss, you would expect him to have a really good game out of fury from that last game. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how they bounce back. Um, talk about with that 40 point loss, uh, and they give up a lot of points to all of them. That's pretty much been like one of their main problems this season. It's gonna be interesting to see how the defense holds up throughout the game. More Pacini on that carry, getting himself nine yards. Anthony LaRosa, who was named Second NJAC one. Player of the Week a couple weeks ago for the props. He made the tackle. So now it is second down. Props really just trying to get a really good defensive possession here. Less than 10 minutes to go, and it'll look like it'll be a first down Mark for Pacini the Lions. Mark Pacini once again on the carry. Yeah, you see TC and Jay, they also Shave your the and like so they're trying to the also control the part of the game. The so it's going to be good to see Shepard how Shepard much Shepard they're going to be running in this game and see if they're going to end up switching and passing in this field. And we talked a little bit about it during the pregame show, but this TC and Jay team doesn't, doesn't run the ball that much. And they haven't had a rushing touchdown this season, just as you said, this year. Yeah, all the rushing touchdowns pretty much have come from the quarterback at the quarterback position. They have the running back haven't had a rushing touchdown yet, but I'm pretty sure Andrew they have to get some touchdowns today to see if they could get, go ahead and get one. Andrew Donahue, the quarterback for the Lions, is sacked with the loss Brown, of a yard. Larosa with the sack, loss of a yard, second and eleven. Anthony Larosa coming up large once again for the props, as there is now less than nine minutes to go. Here in the first quarter, props are up three to nothing. Donahue gives up the ball, and it is going to be a five-yard carry to Vinnie Guckin. Guckin, the six-foot wide receiver senior from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, is another wide receiver who has been unbelievable for the Lions. Donahue, once again, it is gonna be caught for a first down by Vinny. Yeah, that was a good pass by Donahue. And you talked about like how the offense loves the passing game. It's nice to see that they're, that they're open up the passing game early in this game. So now it, the ball will be at the 27 yard line. Andrew Donahue marching right down the field for the Lions. Now there's seven and a half minutes left to go. We're halfway done with the first quarter. Donahue's gonna give it up and it is gonna be run in all the way for a touchdown. Mark Pacini on a 27 yard carry to put the Lions up six to three. And there it is guys, that first touchdown, rushing touchdown by the running back this whole season. It's good to see these guys finally get that touch. Well, Mark Pacini certainly so far is looking as if he is unstoppable. Yeah. The middle just opened up for him after he broke one tackle. And after that, it was just the end zone. And now here comes the kicker for the Lions. And the kick is good. That was number 99, Bobby Wartman, the freshman 
from Somerville, New Jersey, getting himself a big kick to put up the Lions, 7-3 to three so far. And they started off with really good defense from Anthony LaRosa, but marching right down the field between Donahue and Mark Pacini has really hurt them so far. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Ron is not happy because it was a touchdown on the very first drive. Um, this team is not known for putting a lot of points on the board, so I'm pretty sure if Ron could have that one back, they would. Now, Portman is going to kick. Bobby Wortman, excuse me. It's going to be really interesting to see how Ron bounces back off giving up that first touchdown. They scored three points that first drive, but let's see if they could bounce back with another field goal or a touchdown. And here's the kickoff. Seven minutes and 24 seconds to go. And it's going to go out of bounds. Props will get the ball at the 25 yard line. talk a little bit about Elijah Rem, the 5 foot 10 senior playing in his last game. He's been one of the he's been their best wide receiver all season long for the for the profs and today you would expect to see a lot out of him. Yeah, he's definitely got to be a key to offense if they want to win. Here's Husney. He passes it to Nick Rosso. And that is going to be a seven yard receiving pass. So now it is second and three. Hosney is going to give it up to Devine. And Devine will absolutely get himself a first down as he is down at the 41 yard line. Yeah, just to highlight it again, see that Rowan's trying to establish that running game, open up that pass game for him later. A 15 yard run for Messiah Devine. Big run for them as they're trying to get themselves back in front. With six minutes and 24 seconds to go, here in the first quarter, as the props trail seven to three. Puzz, this is it. It is a long pass, and it is no good. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Nick Rosso, and just really good defensive coverage on that play by the Lions. Yeah, he also threw it a little bit long, so that didn't help either. Yeah. But it was, it's, let's see what's the next call. See if they're gonna try to run it a little bit or pass it a little more. It's gonna be interesting. Husney to Devine. Devine is gonna get himself a couple more yards on that play. It is gonna be third down. And I believe third and five. Or excuse me, third and two. Yeah, when you talk about Devine, he's pretty much been a key part of the offense all season. On average, he's at 78 per game. He has three touchdowns on the season. So that's good out there, getting him involved. Big play for the props coming up, and a flag is being thrown. It is a false start on the offense. And now it'll be third and seven, as the ball will be at the 40 yard line. Here's Husney once again, another flag is thrown but Husney will throw it and it is going to be dropped. Nick Rosso was the intended receiver on the play and the ball 
was dropped by number 37, Cole Rochelle. Yeah, so if you look at those last two penalties, Rowan, instead of looking at a thir third and two, you look at a third and seven. And after that play, they're lucky that they had got another flag. So now they're looking at a third and two again. So it is still third down. Messiah Devine is going to be tackled at the 37 yard line. Yeah, that was a nice run up the middle to gain a couple yards. And that'll be good enough for a first down. Big play for Messiah Divine. Yeah, both of these teams doing a good job early to get the chains moving. Well, now they're going to correct it and say that he only got one, one yard from the carry, and he'll be fourth and one. Well, that's a big call. Yeah, it looked like they had the first out of my opinion. Yeah, I thought he did too. And now it like brings up the question whether they're gonna, they're gonna go for it or whether they're gonna kick it. I mean, they come out veteran. Let's see if they're gonna get the first down. Look like it's going to be a little bit short. And let's see if they go for it, which I believe they will, because Husney is still out there. Husney will give it up to Divine, and the Lions will sack Divine. And they spot him a little bit 41. short. And that'll be a turnover for the props. Yep. Even though it was a turnover, it's nice to see that, that Rowan's coming out aggressive. Great defense by the Lions, yep. as they were just able to stop Messiah Divine and the props from getting another first down which would have been really huge for them. So now Donahue will come in and the whole offense for the Lions to try to see if they can take advantage of this with four minutes and five seconds to go. Donahue will give it up. And Mark Magini getting himself another carry. Only good for three yards. Yeah, DCJ's doing a good job of sticking with the running game. You see the running game found their rhythm last drive. So it's good that they're incorporating that into the game plan today. Second and seven for the Lions. <laughs> Donahue will once again give it up to Machini for a couple more yards. Yeah, Machini's been averaging 45 yards a game. So they're trying to get him to find his room throughout this game. And I feel like they're doing a good job making those plays for him. Yeah, absolutely. Making him sure that he stays involved yep. is what's been 
the Lions just haven't really been doing that that much this season, and they have just a little bit of a different game plan yeah, as far as using him. Throughout the season, they've had 287 rushing attempts, and Keeney's had 123 of them. Donahue throws it, and it is good enough, I believe, for a first down, but now they're saying it's incomplete as... Clevenger. Clevenger did compete, did complete the pass, and is now fourth and one. And it looks like they're gonna go for it. Yeah, TCJ is also being aggressive and trying to go for the fourth down. Let's see if the props can give them some payback and get a stop here would be very huge. Yeah, if they get this stop here, it's going to be nice field position. And instead, it is going to be a first down by Donahue, or excuse me, Mark Machini. Now it'll be at the 48-yard yard line, with less than now two minutes to go. Big first down for the Lions. Props won't be able to sack Donahue, but a big pass by Donahue. Yeah, Donahue did a good job of staying, staying in the pocket and not panicking. You see, as soon as the, the pocket collapsed, he just moved a little bit, he just found an open man, completed the pass. He did, and the defense with the props gave him a little bit of pressure, mm -hmm. and he did a really nice job fighting through that pressure yep. to give the Lions a big first down. Donahue once again Play action. will throw for an incomplete pass. Second and ten for the Lions. Mach Machini running it once again. Yep, and it looks like he has a first and out about the five yard line. And it will be first and goal. As they are now in the red zone, looking to see if they can get something cooking and convert. Yep. Let's see how Roman's defense holds up in the red zone. Let's see if they can force TCJ to. is winding down. 20 seconds are left. Let's see if the Lions have one more play in them before the end of the first quarter. And they do. Machini will run it in all the way for a touchdown. His second one of the day. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how TCJ came into the game with no touchdowns from the running backs. One of the first two drives, they have two. <laughs> so. Yeah, Ron's gonna have to make some adjustment on defense. Yeah, absolutely. And this is something that the props really did a good job in their last game, stepping up in the second half with the defense especially. But so far today, they haven't been able to guard the running game. Mm -hmm. So now, on to kick. It'll be Bobby Wurtzman. And the kick is good. Seven seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Big day so far for Machini for the Lions. And that'll do it.
for the first quarter. As the props trail 14 to three. We'll be right back for more second quarter action in just a little bit. Seven seconds left here in the first quarter. And Elijah Ram will get the ball, and he is sacked at the 43-yard line. And it looks like that'll do it here for the first quarter. It's the props 13 to three. We'll be right back for some more second quarter action in just a little bit. here with RTN Channel 5. We're here today and it's a cold, cold day at Richard Wacker Stadium in Glassboro, New Jersey. We have the props lining up with TCNJ. Um, just to wrap up on the first quarter, the props got a field goal. Um, spirits are high. Lots of fans out here today. It's the last game for the props this season and the last collegiate game for the seniors on the props football team. Um, TCNJ is up 13 and Rowan is down three right now, but spirits are still high. We're looking forward to it. Lots of great touches down here. Uh, we look forward to the second quarter. Back to you, Jason. Thank you so much, Sarah. As the, the second quarter is now just begun. Yeah, both teams did a good job of putting up some points in that first quarter. Um, it's interesting. You just have to see how much more wrong can pull off. And TCJ did a real good job of getting points up there. Husney getting pressure. And it looks like it'll be an incomplete pass as the Lions thought that maybe they had an interception on that play but the, but the pass was incomplete. And these are spots where Husney really has to come up big for the props because they're down by 11. I know that, it, that the second quarter just started but putting them Putting them down by four would make it so much easier for the props as Husney gives it up to Elijah Rem and he's sacked and he loses the ball. And it looks like the Lions will get the ball back. Yeah, it was good to see Rowan actually throw a pass. They haven't, they haven't really thrown a lot of pass throughout this game, but you hate to see it. He fumbles after the catch and it's going all the way. A big turn of events for the props. Elijah Rem with the fumble and the turnover. The ball will now be at the 48 yard line. Yeah. And the Lions will have possession. Yeah, let's see how Rowan's defense bounces back. Let's see if they can limit the amount of points that'll put up on them in the second quarter. Just when you think that the props were going to go on a drive, a big turnover as Machini will run it himself. That'll be good for seven yards. So now it is second and five, and the props defense here has to step up. Yeah, this defense has to do a good job holding down the middle, making sure the running game is 
They're limited in the running game. Oh, you see throughout this game, Cheney pretty much controlling the tempo of the game. Pretty much running through the Frost defense as of right now. Yeah, absolutely. And Mark Mancini with another carry there, and that'll be good for a first down as he gets another five yards on that carry. Yeah. TCJ is doing a good job of staying with what's going. They're pretty much staying with the running game. It's been working for them for the first quarter, and they're doing a good job of sticking to it. Thirteen and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. Donahue gives it up once again to Machini, and he is going to be running and will be sacked at the third. The 31 yard line. Yeah, he did a good job of seeing that nothing was there, staying patient, and then finding the hole at the end. So now it is second and two. Eight yard carry for Machini. And so far, it's only the second quarter, but he has. He has at least 50 rushing yards. Yeah, Rowan has to start trying to stop that run. Did they go to stop the run? They get him lost. Donahue is sacked for a loss. All in Tom with the tackle for the props. Big stop for yep. them. And now it is third and three. And the stop on this possession will be huge. The ball is at the 30 yard line. Donahue will try to find somebody and it is gonna be dropped by number 32 for the TCNJ Lions. Colin Tom. Yeah, Donahue did a good job of creating space in the pocket and giving himself some time, but the wide receiver right then just couldn't hold on to it. And that's huge because now it is fourth and three. Yep. Fourth and three from the 31 yard line. At the 31 yard line, and you would think that maybe they would go for a field goal here. Yeah, both of these teams are pretty much staying aggressive. You know, it's the last game of the season. They just want to put as much points on the board as they could. But instead, they're going to go for it. Big play, Donahue gives it up, and oh. it is going to be oh. dropped by a prop. Yeah. Could have been intercepted, but nonetheless, the props will still get the ball back. Yeah, Donahue has to watch out for those interceptions. On the season, he does have 12 interceptions. So it's going to be interesting to see how was that the CT and Jake hold onto the ball. That ball was ricocheted off of one of the yep. wide receivers, and yeah. uh, it just, the, the, the uh, the props just couldn't get a hand on it, but nonetheless, they will get the ball back yep. and pretty try much. to make a big drive yep. for pretty Mike Hosny. Pretty much like the props had that ball, the way it floated in the air. It looked like they didn't come down with it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Husney had a little bit of, of, of a tough time getting the ball. Yeah, it was a very hard snap, but it's a good thing he didn't lose the ball. Absolutely, and he will be sacked, and there will be no gain on that. And so it will be a loss of two, and it will now be second and 12. And if you're the props here, I think that they would possibly try to see if they could go for a play action pass. But instead, they're going to give it up to Messiah Divine, and he gets no gain on that. Yeah, this is a very important drive for Rowan. They're down 3-14, they have to put some type of points on the board. And now it is third and 12. Oh, excuse me, third and 14. Very breezy here at Rick, Richard Wacker Stadium. Yeah, Jason, earlier we talked about after TCJ scored on that last drive, we wanted to see how Rome was going to bounce back defensively. So defensively, they held up to their end of the bargain. Now it's time for the offense to do what they have to do. And Husney will try to get himself out of pressure, and the throw will be caught for a first down. Wow. Let's see if we wrap the spot this one. 
Nick Rosso. Nick Rosso with a big catch. Yep. A 21 yard catch for Nick Rosso. And a big, big pass from Mike Husney yep, yep. out of the pocket. Husney will run it and he will be still running and is going to be down at the 45. Yeah, he did a good job of making a play. He broke a tackle. When it looked like it was, the play was over, he kept it going, kept fighting. And he fought through the defense and found himself a way to get himself an eight-yard gain. And this is the type of offense that we've been used to seeing from the props. Mm -hmm. Here's Devine. And Mike Husney, will be Mike Husney is going to be tackled for a loss. Yeah. Braun's offense, they're pretty much trying to run through the run, yeah, their run option. And it's, it didn't work on that play. You see they got caught for a loss. And now coming in for the props will be number 97, Xavier Brown. This is a huge third down for Rowan. Huge third down. Third and seven. Mike Husney will throw it, and it will be caught by Nick Rosso. And it will be, I believe, a first down. Once again, for the props. Ron doing a good job staying forward. They convert and keep moving the chains. Nick Rosso coming up large for the props, especially on this drive, as he has 22 yards receiving. Yep. Eight and a half minutes to go now, as the props are trying to get something cooking. Messiah Devine will get the ball, and he is going to be sacked at the 40 yard line. defense is doing a pretty good job so far the Lions defense with covering the running game for the props yep yeah on the first drive it looked like Rowan had something going with the running game but ever since it's pretty much been shut down now here's Mike Cosby once again he gives it up to Elijah Rem and Rem is still standing and he will get himself a first down and run it out of bounds yep. that was a very good play he got some yardage there they go moving the chains again Finding Elijah Rem in the corner, the left corner. And that is a big hook, big play for the Rops. We are halfway done with the second quarter. So there's seven and a half minutes to go. Props will take it at the 25 yard line. And it looks. Uh, Messiah Devine will get himself a first down himself and will be tackled at the 12. There they go. Like we pointed out earlier in the game, the running game was a huge part of these two offenses. Both teams trying to control tempo. Absolutely. The tempo so far has been big. And the props will look at the score as they are now two yards away from entering into the red zone. Mike Husney will do a toss off to Messiah Devine and he will get about two yards on that carry. And it is now second and eight. Yeah, this drive is very important for Rowan defense. They don't want to stick to giving another field goal on the board. They want to score a touchdown right here. Last game, Messiah Devine at 79 yards that he gained on 24 attempts. And right now, Mike Husney trying to get out of trouble, and he will be sacked out of bounds at the 10 yard line. So now it is third and nine.
call a flag, excuse me, was made on the play. And I believe I believe it'll still be a third down. Well, that'll bring the Prowse Bats to the 21-yard line. Yep. They lose 10 yards on the play, and then they'll actually be second and 19. Big call. Yep, that might that cost might be costly to them. Let's see if they can overcome it and put some points on the board. Here's Husby. He passes it, and it will be Ooh. incomplete yeah. in the red zone. The intended receiver on that play was Nick Rosso, but the ball was a little bit overthrown. Yeah, he did a good job of getting open. It looked like the person covering him just fell, and he was just wide open, but, but Husby just overthrew him, just missed the target. That was very costly. That would have been a phenomenal catch. I wish they could have that one back for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Now it is third and 19. Five minutes and 34 seconds to go. Mike Husney runs it and will throw it, and it will be caught for a touchdown, and a flag will also be on the play. I think that flag is on the defense, though. So I think the touchdown can stay. I believe it will be on the defense as well. Let's see what they call it. Nonetheless, that was a beautiful catch by Nick Rosso. It also is a good throw by Husney. Absolutely. Oof. It is pass interference on the offense. That is a huge yep. call. Yeah, Ron just killing himself with penalties early on. Wow. And they didn't even say who was who made the Interference. So now the ball will be back at the 36 yard line. Yeah, wrong. Third and 34. Taking himself out of the run zone. See, they dropped that pass and then they get the penalty. Oh, man. Let's see if they can make them pay. Big call. Here's Husney. Trying to get out of trouble, and he will throw it nowhere. So now it'll be fourth down, and this is where Jay Curler will come in for the kick, as the props could not get themselves a touchdown on a big pass interference call that could be costly. Go for the fourth down. Oh, oh excuse me, they're gonna punt it. Oh. Yeah. Number 14 tries to stop the ball from going to the end zone after it bounces from the one, but just couldn't. Mike Husney with the punt there, and the ball will be at the 15 yard line. With five minutes. And nine seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Well, we take a little. We take a look at the NJAC standings. Salisbury is eight and zero overall so far this season. They haven't lost since last year. Wesley College, they're f they are eight and one, and they have won four in a row. And Montclair State, five and four overall on the season as well. These are the top three teams in the end, Jack. As a great defensive stop by the Rowan University props. 
Quarterback thought Donnie, you thought he had an open hole, so he tried to run for it, but he ended up getting caught by the legs. And that'll be just a loss of a yard. It is now second and an eleven on the play. As Donahue will try to get out of trouble and instead he's gonna be sat for another loss. Yep. Yeah, that pocket just collapsed on him. Trying to mix up the axle, but there's nowhere to go. After he had three people coming around him. Great defensive coverage on Donahue as it is now third and 20 with four minutes and 10 seconds to go. The ball will be at the 10 yard line in Rowan's zone. Yep, Braun doing a good job of making a loose yardage, making a quick third down. Donahue trying to see if he can get out of this jam and he gets free and will pass it for, I believe, a gain of seven yards on the play. Great defense by the props. Clevenger did complete the pass. Now Ron Evans doing a good job holding up to the end of the bargain again, creating a quick three and out. And just because of that big loss on the third possession, on the third down, props are gonna get the ball back. Fourth and 12. Elijah Ram will just let the ball bounce and now he takes the ball and will be still on his feet and now he is sacked at the 30 yard line. Yeah, Great that, punt. That was a nice kick by TCJ, a nice deep kick to put them back in good position on defense. So now there's three minutes and two seconds left. Let's see if Mike Husney can try to come up large in this situation and only make it a one possession game. Yeah. Rowan's defense after that first drive has pretty much been eating a little bit of yardage, but not as much as they like. They've been able to run through the game, but they haven't really established a passing game. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can establish a passing game and start getting something rolling. Well, this year they had two big chances to try to score a touchdown. Yep. One ended up being a field goal, and that was on the first possession, and then the other one cost them on a pass interference call. Yep. And taking advantage of trying to drive down the field in this scenario, it's gonna be big for the props. And we talk a little bit about the defense too, and how they weren't really able to stop the running game for the Lions, but on that possession, they were able to do a really great job just getting on their on their men and just uh, getting a lot of really good coverage. Yeah, well, let's talk about just the season in general. In general, in general they've given up 30 points a game, but they're doing a good job of holding them wrong at three points. So that's a big improvement on this game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the ball will be at the 35-yard line in the TCNJ zone. It's funny, it's it's really sunny outside, but you wouldn't expect it to be this chilly. Yeah, it is a real cold one. See everybody out here with blankets and everything. <laughs> I just wish we had our blanket with us. Yeah, it's Pretty fat here mm -hmm. at Richard Wacker Stadium. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people were bundled up. It yep. is really that time yep. of season. Yep. Which is absolutely crazy. So Mike Husney has the ball. He's gonna run it himself and will be Ooh tackled at the 21 yard line with a gain of 10 yards. Yeah, it was a really good run, but he has to watch out for that hit. Yeah, that hit, yep. well, it looks pretty brutal there. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta protect yourself and just take the slide. <laughs> it's true. Two and a half minutes to go as the first half is winding down now. 
And here's Mike Husney. And he will give it up to Messiah Devine on another carry. And that one will be for about six yards. Or excuse me, another first down. Yeah, that was a good run. Now let's see if they can establish a pass again and go with that runner. Husney will toss it to Messiah Devine, and Devine is still standing and will be sat at the 40. Yeah, he did a good job of finding that hole. A 13 yard gain, very nicely done between Mike Husney and Messiah Devine. A lot of really great chemistry yeah. between both of them. Nice one two combo. And here's Husney once again. He will pass it to Elijah Reb, who is free and will be sacked at the 24 yard line. Yeah, that was a nice pass, a nice pass to get this, run, this pass again going. Ron moving the chain. And the Reds are going to see if they can put up some points on the board. 44 yard reception for Elijah Reb. And just like that, they're at the 15 yard line. Ron's doing a real good job getting in, in, in the red zone. But it's crucial that they put up points on the board. It's and crucial. that will be a loss for Messiah Divine. Rowan now will call a timeout, but a big possession yeah. for the prop so far this year. Just being able to march down the field and not only have a big possession with the running game, but a big pass to Elijah Rapp by yeah. Mike Cosby. Those three points that they have on the board came from the very first drive of the game. After that, it's pretty much been empty. So Rowan, they have to put up points to keep this game close. And if you're Mike Husney on this on, on this next play, it is now second and ten. What would be your uh, intention to do on this play? Um, I would try to get that running game going. Devon is doing a real good job of finding those holes. Um, let's try to punch him in there and get yeah, well, some points. Let's see if they could take advantage of using Messiah Devon on this next play, as he has been he's been doing pretty well so far this game. He started off a little bit slow. Yep. But now he's been picking it up. I think he's starting to warm up a little bit. Yeah, oof. I, ho I hope so. <laughs> it is a cold one out here. So now with the second and 10, it'll be at the 15 yard line mm -hmm. in the red zone. Mike Husney passes it to Elijah Rem, and it is going to be sacked at the 10 yard line. John Maldonado with the catch. And it is now third down. With a minute left to go. And I believe that's gonna be a false start. Yeah, those flags starting to add up over time. They're being very detrimental to the team. You see the last trip today in red zone, all the flags put to push them out of the red zone and even out of field goal range and then force them to punt. the scoreboard it says that it is now third and eight and the ball will be taken back at the 13 yard line yeah it's pretty much the same thing the last trip down to here to the red zone they were I believe two they were it's two the second down and they had two yards to go and then he had a couple of flags that pushed them back further and they made it I think it was two and 20 so Ron has to control what they're doing they have to limit those flags to give them a better chance of scoring now I believe a timeout is going to be called by TCNJ. And literally 59 seconds left to go here in the first half. Trying to see if the props can score here. Hopefully, maybe they would decide to go for a two point conversion on this play and then it'll be, they'll only be down by a field goal. Yeah, it's very important for them to put up points right now because in the third quarter, I believe TCNJ is going to have the ball. So yeah. they have to put some points up now. And they also don't want to make sure that TCNJ marches down the field so quickly yep. at the end of this half because they might also be able to score a field yep. goal too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something that they do not want. They want to keep this game as close, close as they could. They would like a touchdown to keep it a one possession game. But if they have to take the field goal, I think they should take the field goal. Absolutely. So now they're coming out of the timeout. Offense trying to get settled here. Here's Mike Husney. 
passes it to Elijah Rem, and Rem will be sacked at the five yard line. So now it'll be fourth and three. It's gonna be interesting to see if the coach is gonna go for it. I honestly think I'm on opinion that they should take the field goal. It looks like there's a player hurt on the field. Player is down, but I stand corrected as it is now a first down, I believe. But it says on the scoreboard it's fourth and one. But that was a gain of nine yards. Now there's 49 seconds left. The refs are coming together, deciding what is going on. Yep, they're bringing out the chains of measure. This is a huge call because now they have to decide if it is fourth down, if they're going to go for it or if they're going to kick the field goal. And then if it is first down, it'll be first and goal. Yeah. I think honestly that you kick the field goal, keep this game an eight-point game. So sooner or later they just go for a touchdown and go for two. I think a field goal is in the best interest as of right now. Well, they're going to call it first and goal with 49 seconds left at the four-yard line. So the props will get a huge opportunity here to score. Both of these coaches coming up very aggressive in the first half. Every, every chance that they had to go for it, they went for it. And Messiah Devine will be sat at the two yard line. Thirty seconds to go. The clock has not stopped. It is second and goal, as Mike Husney will be sacked for a loss of two. Yeah. And now, Andrew Ponzo making the tap, the tackle on the play. And now a timeout is called by the props. A lot of action just happened there within those past two plays as the defense for the Lions did a pretty good job stepping up. Yeah, that, that defense in the red zone is holding up. They limited this offense of not scoring as much. You see them leaving wrong with three points, and they have 14. That is a huge difference from what we've seen through for TCMJ throughout the season. Absolutely, and now I believe that that is their last timeout that they had. And now it is going to be huge to see if they decide whether they're just going to, whether they have one more play left to try to go for a pass and then try to go for a field goal or if they're, or if they're just going to go for the field goal. That looks like they're going to go for it. Maybe they're going to get one more shot at it. Well, let's see. They got Big to do play quick. for the props. Something quick. Just in case they don't get it, they also have another down. And it is third and goal, and the pass will be incomplete. Nice yep. reflection by that Lions defense. Great defense by the Lions as the props were just able to get close to the red zone. And now Jake Hurler will come in to kick and try to make it a one possession game. Yeah, I think they have no choice but to kick the field goal in this position. Here's Hurler. And the kick it's is blocked. no good. Ooh. Wow. Blocked. It is blocked by the Lions with six seconds left to go. And the Lions defense coming up yep. large once again. Yeah, Hurler, a 43% field goal kicker. You wish to see if he had a chance to make it, but the Lions just didn't hold up strong and the kick is just blocked. So Ron comes away with no points and it's still a two possession game. That is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And now there's six seconds left. 
here in the first half. Yeah, that TCNJ defense is doing a good job holding up in this first half. You can see if they carry this momentum into the second half or see if Rome can turn it around and make something happen offensively. And they're going to let the clock run down as the Lions and the Props will head back into the locker room. The Props are down 14 to 3. And just as you think that when things are going well for the Props and they're marching down the field, you think that something big is going to happen. And instead, they just weren't able to score. Yeah, that defense did not do a good job of containing that Lions offense. That running game for the offense pretty much controlled the game. Absolutely, and Messiah Devine having a big part of rushing it, rushing it on that last possession, and he wasn't able to come up large either on that last possession. Yeah. So, but the defense for the Lions has been unbelievable so far today as they come in here to Rowan and well, we're able to Sarah hold Buckley, up the three points. Back. It's halftime now. Um, wild end to the second quarter. Um, we ended with the props at three and TCNJ at 14. Um, we're noticing that it's a really run heavy offense. Um, not too much work down on the wide receivers end, just more quarterbacks running and lots of lots of hype on the stands. The crowd is wild. Um, we are down, but we're looking forward to the third quarter, keeping spirits high despite the cold weather. We're gonna fight through and see what the props have in store. Back to you, Jason. Thank you, Sarah. And the props will go into this half, down 14 to three. The defense for the props hasn't been able to get going uh, throughout the first quarter, but they did step up. Uh, Production support props provided in part by Sakanti's Italian Pizza of Glassboro. Sakanti's so Pizza is located but at 321 we'll right Mullet Road in Glassboro, New Jersey. Order online at www.sakantis.com or call 856-881-4412. Sakantis is a proud supporter of RTN Channel 5. I pay attention for a living. I watch plays and make important calls. While I'm busy watching the game, I need your help keeping an eye on the stands. We all play a role in protecting our communities. If you see something suspicious, make the right call. Tell a law enforcement official. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver. The one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. So, same time next week? Well, of course. It's my job to pay attention to the game, and I take my job seriously. While I'm busy watching the game, I need your help keeping an eye on the stands. If you see something that doesn't look quite right, tell a law enforcement official. We all play an important role in protecting our communities, and you can help. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Packers. Vikings. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Cinderella found the pet that fits her perfectly. Tiana gave her pet the royal treatment. Belle found beauty where no one else did. And you can too. Share your heart. 
share your love. Bring home your forever friend. Make a shelter pet part of your world. Happily Ever After begins at theshelterpetproject.org. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. I pay attention for a living. I watch plays and make important calls. While I'm busy watching the game, I need your help keeping an eye on the stands. If you see something suspicious, make the right call. Tell a law enforcement official. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. RBIs and 36 homers. Swings at the first pitch and fouls his feet back into the stand. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. You realize that 49 million Americans struggle with hunger? That's one out of every six Americans. These people are around us every day. They're our friends, they're our coworkers, their kids go to school with our kids. Sometimes we're not even aware that they're struggling. This problem is closer than you think. But so is the solution. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. I pay attention for a living. I watch plays and make important calls. While I'm busy watching the game, I need your help keeping an eye on the stands. We all play a role in protecting our communities. If you see something suspicious, make the right call. Tell a law enforcement official. To find a home, 
Go to the shelterpetproject.org and search your local shelters and rescues. Go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Gallery West, located in Westby Hall, displays student artwork and spotlights artwork all along the building. There's two galleries. One is located on the second floor in 207, and the main gallery is located on the first floor. Gallery West hours are open from Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So come on out and be mesmerized by all the artwork Gallery West has to offer. Never walk to class again. The Rowan University Shuttle is one of the many services that makes life easier at Rowan. The internal shuttle goes around the Glassboro campus starting at 7 a.m. at the Rowan Boulevard Apartments and does not stop running until after midnight. On Wednesdays and Fridays, starting at 6 p.m., the shuttle goes to the Glassboro Shopping Center, so if you need to get to class or get some shopping done, the Rowan Internal Shuttle will be there for you. For more information on times and shuttle stop locations, go online to rowan.edu slash shuttle. Rowan University is committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and creating an active culture that helps preserve the environment. Protect the planet and leave a smaller carbon footprint. Consider walking or biking as an alternative to driving. Recycle and invest in a reusable water bottle. At Rowan, students care about the environment. Join us in the practice and promotion of environmentally responsible choices. Do you need access to the tools and resources to help you with your class projects and papers? Or maybe just find a quiet area to study? Well, Rowan's Campbell Library is the best place for you. Volunteers at the Writing Center can help you improve your writing skills in a one-on-one -on -one environment. Study rooms can be reserved for group activities, studying, or even just to hang out and collaborate. So come on by the Campbell Library and see what's in store to help you succeed. Ever wonder what it would be like to share the sky with the stars? The Rome Planetarium provides a glorious, visually stunning experience of viewing our galaxy in a way you never have before. The Cosmic Castaway Show dives into the meaning of the soul system. The Rowan Planetarium, located at Rowan Science Building. To learn more about special shows and events, go online at rowan.edu slash planetarium. Ever wondered what activities there are outside of class? Rowan After Hours is a great way to entertain yourself, learn about things you previously did not know, and have the ability to socialize with other students on campus. Students will have fun with game night, free food, music, and much more. Every week there are different themes with different activities. Ra takes place late nights, Thursday through Saturday. Come out, explore the activities, and most importantly, it's free! So be sure to check the Ra calendar for fun events that you and your friends can attend each week. Stuck on that pesky paper you have to do and just feel like giving up? Well, don't! Come to the Writing Center in Rowan's Campbell Library and get the help you so desperately need. An enthusiastic team of tutors eagerly awaits to help you with any of your scholarly writing needs. Need some help? Come visit the Rowan Writing Center on the first floor of Campbell Library.
Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS-FM is Rowan's very own award-winning collegiate radio station, servicing South Jersey and parts of Philadelphia and Delaware. At Rowan Radio, students have the opportunity to get hands-on experience as an on-air DJ, playing the best of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, as well as being able to host talk shows and specialty shows. WGLS also offers members the ability to work in audio mixing and editing. For more information about the station, visit www.rowanradio.com and tune in to the music that matters. Hey Rowan students, looking for a fun way to get involved in campus activities and join RTN, the Rowan Television Network. RTN offers positions in front of and behind the camera where students can experience the field of television production. They produce sports, news, and entertainment programming. All available to stream online or on campus on Channel 5. Meetings are held on Tuesdays at 9.30 p.m. in King Auditorium. For more info, head to rtnch5.com. RTN, your station, your station, your story. Your story. Are you a military veteran or the child of a veteran? The Veterans Affairs Office at Rowan University offers educational benefits to veterans and their families in the form of scholarships, financial aid, work-study programs, and more. The office is at the Academic Success Center on the third floor of Savitz Hall and has walk-in and scheduled appointment times, including some evening hours. To learn more, call 856-256-4233, email veteransaffairsoffice at rowan.edu, or visit sites.rowan.edu slash veterans. Serving those who have served us. I pay attention for a living. I watch plays and make important calls. While I'm busy watching the game, I need your help keeping an eye on the stands. We all play a role in protecting our communities. If you see something suspicious, make the right call. Tell a law enforcement official. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. <laughs> So, uh, same time next week? Well, of course. It's my job to pay attention to the game, and I take my job seriously. While I'm busy watching the game, I need your help keeping an eye on the stands. If you see something that doesn't look quite right, tell a law enforcement official. We all play an important role in protecting our communities, and you can help. If you see something suspicious, Say something to local authorities. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Packers. Vikings. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Cinderella found the pet that fits her perfectly. Tiana gave her pet the royal treatment. Belle found beauty where no one else did. And you can too. Share your heart. Share your love. Bring home your forever friend. Make a shelter pet part of your world. Happily Ever After begins at theshelterpetproject.org. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium.
here is the Props Trail against the UCNJ Lions, 14 to three. My name is Jason Joseph, and also here uh, to my right is Nasir Nichols. And Nasir, you know, we talked a lot of we, we talked a little bit about this at the beginning of uh, of a halftime, but you know, we talked about how this Props team just hasn't been able to take advantage of scoring, especially when they have been marching down the field. Yeah. The last two trips they took to the red zone, uh, unfortunate penalties that have moved them back out and pushed them back out. And then ever since, they have been unable to recover. So we're going to try to see if Ron can bounce back. So hopefully they can get back to those red zone, get back to the red zone and start scoring and finishing and capitalizing. And, oh. so, and something, the, o the other thing too I wanted to mention was that Mark Piccini, the running back for the TCNJ Lions so far has been spectacular. You even said it earlier how besides the quarterback, they haven't had anybody else score when it came to rushing. And so far today, he has two touchdowns. Yeah, that's good for them. He has two in the first half. That's yeah. crazy. So they're doing a good job of getting him incorporated into the game plan. We're going to see if they can keep him rolling and keep moving. Well, the Lions will get the ball to start off the third quarter. And Jay Curler is going to be kicking it for them. Kick will be down to the 10 yard line and it'll be about a gain of 15 yards. Darby on the return there. And the defense, you know, we, we also talked a little bit about this too, but the defense in the second quarter was actually pretty good. And they stopped the Lions on a big stop, especially when. They were almost in the red zone. Yeah, after that second touchdown that TT and J scored, the defense pretty much clogged up those holes and stopped the running game and have been forced in fourth downs nonstop. And then we talk a little bit about the offense. You know, they had they had several opportunities as Mark Piccini will get himself a first down on the carry. Um, but we talk about we talk about the offense and how they just weren't able to, t to take advantage of opportunities, especially they had one they, they had one time where they where uh, they got called back for pass interference, and that was a big call that went against the props. And hopefully, in this hopefully throughout this whole second half, the offense will be able to step up. Yeah, if it wasn't for those penalty calls, we'd be looking at probably Ron in the league, or it would be in within like a field goal game. They just haven't been able to. They say boys pretty much. All those penalties have pretty much moved them back, and I'm pretty sure the coach talked to them about it at halftime, and they're going to try to find a way to stay poised and stay themselves, just avoid penalties. Yeah, and the other thing, too, that we also forgot to mention was that at the end of this, at the end, at the end of the second quarter, they had a chance to score a field goal, and Jake Hurler had the kick blocked. Yep. And now it's still a two-possession game, and now they have to play defense coming into this uh, quarter and Mark Piccini will get himself another carry. Sonny Tap gets the tackle, one of the best defenders yeah. on this props team. But yeah. Yeah. Like you said, Roman pretty much been unlucky around the board. They pretty much got a field goal block when they tried to settle and then those penalties are just unfortunate. So it is a first and ten for TCNJ Lions and it'll be another first down for Mark Piccini the props just can't stop him yeah he's doing a good job of styling himself in the running game um, both of these teams have pretty much a good passing game they're more passive on offense and it's good to see that they're trying to start the running game and get this team going so far, so far he has over a hundred rushing yards, Ooh. which I believe is the longest he's had this season. And just in the first half too. So yeah. And now there, there is an injury that is on the field. That's something that you absolutely just don't like to see at all, especially when a player's down, and all you can do is just hope that they're going to be okay. Yep, especially in the last game too. Left to go here in 
the second quarter, we take a look at um, we take a look at the end jack standing. Salisbury University is playing William Patterson. That game is going on now, and that game started at one o'clock. Some of the other uh, some of the other games that are going on around the end jack, we have Wesley College. They're facing Christopher Newport today. Um, and then Montclair State, they're facing uh, Kane University. That game also started at 1 o'clock one o'clock today. And then and then uh, and the props are playing TCNJ. So those are all the games that are going on around the NJ. And now we look like we have a referee down on the field. I've never seen anything like it. Looks like he's cramping up. Oh my goodness. The ref just fell and I think he has a leg cramp. Oof. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this either. Oh my goodness. Just as we saw an injury and a player being taken off the field from the Lions. Now we have a ref down. Well, we hope he's okay. So little to talk about wrong, so I'm pretty sure Darren is in the title trying to talk about defensive schemes and stuff like that, that they can stop this TCNJ offense because that's part of what they have to do in the second half. They have to limit the amount of points that TCNJ is scoring, and they also have to put some points on the board. Well, this is like a free time out for them because now, the, now they can try to come up with something, yep. just as you said. And, you know, they're down by two possessions, and if they can use this free time out just to try to come up with some sort of game plan just to get the ball back and try to get a big stop, yeah, that's going to be huge. And now here comes the stretcher. that everything is okay. Yep. Because no matter what it is, what, what type of injury it may be, you definitely don't like to see players or even a rep go down. Yeah. Defense this season has been pretty good so far. Talk about how much how much yardage they've given up to their opponents. They've given up 1,220 rushing yards, and they've gained 1,594 coming into today. They've only allowed 55 rushing uh, first touchdowns, and they've gained 67. But when it comes to passing, they've allowed 91 first downs, and they've only gained 67. down at the he can give the ball and he does to Pacini and that's good for a first down. Yep, Pacini does a good job getting across the midfield getting that first down. The one thing that the props really haven't been doing when it, as far as it comes from the one from the running game is they haven't really been guarding the holes. Yeah. And like, like I said earlier, coming into this game, no touchdowns by the rushing game. So they, I'm pretty sure that Ron probably thought about the passing game with TCNJ. But now that TCNJ is established and running game through this game, you have to try to protect that line of scrimmage. And you would think that the coaching would want them, would want them to adjust their game plan and switch. And that is going to be great defense by the props as Donahue will be sapped for a loss. Try to catch him off guard with that play action on that first on that first down, but defense is not full. So now it is now second and 19. Lions ball. The ball will be at the 44 yard line. that team to a comeback as, as 
as they were down by 20. And that ball is going to be caught for a first down. And it will be taken all the way to the two yard line. Yep. Yeah, that was a good pass. That was a very good pass. Moves him into the red zone. And here's TCJ trying to capitalize on his red zone opportunity. Jack Clevenger with a 54 yard reception. That's the big one. That's the biggest one of the day. And now it is first and goal at the three yard line. And with first and goal, Pacini is going to be tackled. And it is going to be second and goal. Yeah, it looked like he tried to cut back and just ended up slipping. Defense doing a nice job on that play. Just trying to attack as the Lions are in the red zone. And Donahue trying to get out of trouble and he will step out of bounds. And that will now be third and goal. Great defense by Tim Hutchinson and the Rowan University props on that possession. Yeah, it looked like Donnie trying to make something happen, but when he tried to run out the pocket, he kind of lost what he was at on the field. He stepped out of bounds. I think he should have just threw it away to keep the yardage instead of just running out of bounds. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was kind of curious to know why he didn't do that. But the props did put him in check yep. in that moment. Now it's third and goal. Donahue once again in trouble. And he will throw it and it will be caught. And it's good for a touchdown. Wow. What a catch by number 97 for the TCNJ Lions. Andrew Conzo. Now, the Lions are up 20 to three. Great pass by Donahue. That's his first touchdown pass of the day. And now Bobby Wartman coming in and the kick is no good. So the props are down by 17. With nine minutes and six seconds to go here in the third quarter. And they just can't stop the bleeding nope. this year. It looked like that defense was just going to hold up. They forced a third down, but just couldn't hold for one more play. You would like to see them hold up for one more play, to see them at least hold, hold off for at least a field goal. But Rowan's just not able to capitalize. And now Mike Husney coming in for another possession where he's going to have a lot of pressure. Yeah, they definitely got to put up some type of points on the board. Seven for a field goal is just okay, but they definitely probably need a touchdown. Absolutely. And I think that the other thing too is that we haven't really been, see been seeing a lot of action with Elijah Rem. I know that he had that one big catch mm -hmm. um, during the second quarter, but you would think that since they're trailing now by 17 points that that Mike Husney will use him as a go-to man. Yeah, well, we're going to see this drop to see if they have incorporated him, him into the game plan. This is their first uh, possession of the ball this half. TCJ did a good job of controlling the clock and the tempo of the game. So we're going to see if they, they keep on with the running game, but I think the passing game is should be their main focus as well. Absolutely, and the kick is coming off. It is a kickoff, and uh, Messiah Devine will run it. And he will be tapped, tackled at the 34-yard line in the Roman zone. The ball's going to be on the 35-yard line. The other thing, too, is that Messiah Devine, you know, he hasn't had the best game himself either. He started off kind of slow. Then he picked it up a little bit in the second quarter. And you, was, you would expect him to have a big second half as well. 
Yeah, they were incorporating him into the game plan. But you see, every time they got to the red zone, a few costly penalties moved them back. So they ended up trying to pass on those possessions. But they just have to stay poised, limit the amount of flags, keep the running game going, and then hopefully opens up the passing game for them. Now Messiah Devine gets a, a four-yard carry on that as it is now uh, on the 37-yard line. Second and six for the props. They're trailing by 17. Mike Husney will pass it to Elijah Rem, and he is going to be tackled out of bounds. Yep. He's, looks like they slotted for a first, first down. down. Yep. Yep. Big play. Get the chains moving one by one. The ball is now at the 44 yard line. And Mike Husney will go all himself for, I believe, I believe that'll be eight or nine yards on that play. Great run by Mike Husney. Oh, just bottom for the first down. And it is good for a first down. It is 10 yards on that play. Seven minutes and 35 seconds to go. Messiah Devine will be tackled at the 43. Just in about the road five yards. Zone. A nice five yard run just to eat up some yardage. Now second and five on the play. And a toss to Messiah Devine, and he is going to be sacked for a loss on that play. Great defense by the TCNJ Lions. Corey Luth, the junior linebacker from Sykesville, Maryland, getting a huge tackle on that play. And this will put a lot of pressure on Mike Husney as he has the ball and he passes it and CJ Barrett will catch the ball but it will now be 4th and 11 on the play. Like they're sending a punt team out. Tom Brennan will punt the ball. Yeah, I know Ron wishes they could put some points on the board, but they still have a lot of time left in the game. They do, and the defense now is what's going to have to step up as Mike Husney yep. and the offensive part will head to the bench. And it is going to be kicked out of bounds. At number 14 for the Rowan University props, Nick Rosso. So now there's five minutes and 46 seconds left. A big possession that the props couldn't take advantage of on that opportunity. A great defensive tackle um, from the TCNJ Lions linebacker, Corey Luth, which put Messiah Devine into a lot of trouble. And now the props have to play some defense. Yeah, TCNJ Lions doing a good job on protecting the running game. They're keeping them contained, not letting them get too far. They're giving up a few first downs here and there, but overall they're forcing fourth downs and getting their offense a chance to put more points on the board and add on to the lead. And now the Lions will have the ball. Mark Machini gets the ball, and he loses two yards. Or excuse me, he gains two yards on that play. The ball's now at the 14 yard line. As the props trail 20 to three with five minutes and 20 seconds here to go in the third quarter at Richard Wacker Stadium. the quarterback and he is running into some trouble and that will be caught. Pass is complete to 
It is now third and one on the play. Production support provided by Sacanti's Italia Pizza. Sacanti's Italia Pizza. They are located on 321 Molica Hill Road, Glassboro, New Jersey. The zip code is 08028, and the phone number is 856-881-4412. And finally, the website is www.sacantis.com. Third and two on the play at the 20-yard line with four minutes and 17 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Profs need to stop here. Clock is still winding down. And Donahue gives it up to Pacini. And that will be good for a gain of three yards. Yeah, he did a good job making something out of nothing. It looked like all the holes were covered there, but he still ended up getting two yards. Good, good game. That was a good game. Now the clock is running down, and if you're TC Andre, you're in no particular hurry nope. to try to score, and you're just gonna let the clock run down as much as you can. Yeah, they're doing a good job, just making sure the offense stays patient, not force anything, not doing anything too crazy to give Roan any more chances to score. Pacini will run once again, and he will be sacked at the 30 yard line. Huge third down for Ron here, huge. Yeah, big. Now it is third and three. Uh, third that, that'll three. actually be on the 29 yard line. The but they need one more really good stop mm -hmm. and try to get the ball back with hopefully a little bit less than two minutes to go. Let's see what Donahue has in store here. Donahue is looking to pass, and he gets into trouble, but instead will pass it to Mark Machini, and that'll be good for, I believe, it'll be It'll be good for a fourth down. Yeah, Ron did a good job of containing that defense. It looked like they got to Donahue, but Donahue did a quick pass to the right to Pacini. Pacini almost had the first down. They did. The defense made sure that, that mm -hmm. they stepped back on him, yep. and they trapped him. And uh, Pacini, they, they, forced, they forced Donahue to give it up, and luckily, Pacini was there, but he just wasn't able to get anything out of it yeah. as Garasso will be on the return and he catches it. Yeah. And it'll be at the 33 yard line for the Profs with less than 90 seconds to go mm -hmm. here in the third quarter. Yep, Rollins Stevens doing a good job once again, holding up to the end of the bargain, giving the offense a chance to score. Doing a good job of getting the ball out of TCJ hands in a few possessions but the offense just had to capitalize and we haven't seen that yet. Absolutely, and this is a big opportunity because mm -hmm. now they're down by three possessions. Yep. It's a 20 to three game and a big drive for Mike Husney as he will throw it and it will be caught by Elijah Rem yep. for a first down. Yep. It's, it's important for Ron to take this one pass at a time. Absolutely, See, and now they're not wasting any time. Yep, you have to get a move on it. A minute and three seconds to go here in the third quarter. John Maldonado with the catch. And Mike Husney will pass it. And that'll be once again to John Maldonado. That'll be good for about four yards. Yep. Throughout the game, you've seen that connection with Husney and Maldonado. 
good to see them, those two guys get it going. The clock is still winding down. The chemistry has been huge from this props team throughout the season. And uh, handoff to Messiah Devine. And that'll be that'll be third down. But it'll, I believe, be third and two on that play. Now there's 10 seconds left. And I believe that they're going to take it to the fourth quarter and they will as the clock is going to continue to wind down and the third quarter is over so TCNJ does score another touchdown in the third quarter to put them up 20 to 3 as the props trail by 17 and yeah the defense just hasn't been able to step up the offense as well hasn't been able to score on the board. They get a few first downs and then they just aren't able to capitalize here and there. Yeah, well now they will get the ball in the fourth quarter to start to start it. And yeah, hopefully they'll be able to score at the beginning of the fourth quarter. So and now Sarah Buckley with the report. What's up, everyone? This is Sarah Buckley back here at w Richard Wacker Stadium in Glassboro, New Jersey. We just ended off the third quarter with the props. We are still down three, and TCNJ is up 20. Um, spirits are still high. We're continuing the energy. It's a great time out here. Still super cold, about 40 degrees, but we're still enjoying our time and keeping it in for the props. We're excited for them. Um, we're excited to see what they have in store. It is their last game of the season, so we all have high hopes, um, and we're really excited to see them finish it out. Back to you, Jason. Thank you, Sarah. The props will get the ball back at the 48-yard line with the fourth quarter just about ready to get on its way. And that will be caught by Maldonado. Or excuse me, to Nick Rosso. And that will now be fourth down. First down, goal. Yeah, so That's actually going to be good for a first down. Yeah, the rough gave him the spot, and Ron's getting those chains moving. They just have to stay poised. They got to attack now. Three possession game, and they, don't have, they have very little time. Absolutely, and now uh, the, the flag is coming down on the play. And it looks like it'll be first and 15 now because of that flag. And the ball will be taken back to the 45. Or the 43. And you wonder, you wonder how, how they're going to utilize, or how Mike Husney is going to utilize uh, Elijah Wren, John Maldonado, and Messiah Devine in this drive. As that'll be. A second down, Mike Husney on yeah. the carry there, mm -hmm. and he will be sacked at the 55. Yeah, it's, it's important for him to start using his wide receivers. The time is ticking down, so running game looks like it's less of an option now. He's got to start passing the ball a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, using the wide receivers is really going to be key throughout the rest of this game as Mike Husney will actually get himself first down on the rush it is now third and six at the 43 yard line Husney to divine a flag is yep. thrown but Husney trying to fight his way to get a first down. And let's see what the call is. And we also have a player hurting on the field. Yeah, Lion is down too. <laughs> Looks like Cordy Luth is down. It is a false start on the defense. That is the call. So the props will get the first down. 
on that play. It'll be first and 10. But Corey Luth is down on the field. Now Rowan got to take advantage. And Luth will now be out of the game. And that's big because he had that big sack on Messiah Devine, which could have started a rally for the props. And now that he's out, the props could try to take advantage of this. Yep. Yeah, they have to. 13 minutes left. They need three touchdowns to get back in the game. So now the ball is at the 33 in props territory. But I gotta ask you a question, Jason. Um, do you think, uh, what do you think is going through the coach's mind? Like, if it does get the fourth down, do you think are they gonna go for the field goal, or do you think they're gonna go for it? Well, Mike Husney will get himself a touchdown on that play, and Nick Rosso gets himself the catch, so they will get the touchdown, and now they'll only be down by 11 points. So that changes the whole landscape yep, of everything. It definitely does. It definitely does. <laughs> Rowan needed that one. They finally capitalized and find their way into the end zone. So now these, uh, it looks like they're going to set out their field goal team. Yeah, and now that was a 35-yard reception mm -hmm. for Rosso yep. in his last game yep. of this season. And Hurler with the kick, That's and good. it's good. Mm -hmm. And the kick is good. Yep, Ron did a good job of scoring on that possession, but let's see if they could carry that momentum to that next possession. Absolutely, and this is where the defense and the offense have to be on the same yep. page, yep. and they have to they have to be in attack mode yep. with less than 13 minutes to go and, hopefully and try to see if they can get themselves a big win. Yeah, hopefully the touchdown energizes the defense to get some playing. That's just a good job by the quarterback to stop the bleeding a little bit. Let's see how, what they do coming out. And Mike Husney had some opportunities early on, but finally he took advantage of a big one as now the props are only down by 10 with 12 minutes and 54 seconds to go. And then there's yep. now a two possession game. Yep, still a lot of time, still a lot of time. And the kick will go all the way to the five yard line. And and that was a nice carry right there. Mm -hmm. That'll put them at the 35-yard line. Gives them good field position to start with. And if you're the Lions, that's what you want to be in. You just want, all you just want to be in is really good field position. And now you wonder if Donahue or how Donahue is going to use the mm -hmm. clock to his advantage in yep. this possession. <laughs> see how many times he passes the ball, how many times he's going to give it up to yeah, the start running back. TCJ definitely has to be thinking about uh, using the time to their advantage. If they control the tempo of the game, uh, it's pretty much going to be smooth sailing forward. But Rowan has to do their job of stopping them quick. And there's a quick stop right there. And that was great defense by the props. Tomlin does get the carry there. Tim Hutchinson gets the tackle. It is good for a gain of three yards. So now it's second and seven. And for what that was, that was actually not a bad that was actually not a bad run. Yep, wrong have to watch that time. Time is ticking. The pass by Ooh. Donahue is intercepted. Then it's dropped. And it's dropped. Oh. Oh my goodness. Wow. I know Number 46 for the for the Rowan University props. Tim Hutchinson just couldn't hang on to the ball and he had it yeah, right there. It. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And if you recall, think about it. It'll put them in a great field position to score. They're already on their side to score. Just wish he could have that one back. And now they have to make one more stop on this play. Donahue will throw it, and it is incomplete. Great defense by the props, and they will get the ball back. That defense did held up. 
So now, Braun get another chance to put some points on the board, make this game even closer. Thank God that that incomplete pass yep. did not cost them on that yep. play. There's now less than 12 minutes to go. 11 minutes and 59 seconds to be exact on the game clock. But you gotta think though, they wish they had it. Now they're gonna get a punt on the opposite side of the field. If they'd had the interception, definitely would save some time. And Elijah Rem will get the ball. And he is gonna be set at the 20 yard line. So Mike Husney coming in again for a big drive and a big moment. Yep. Now it's time for that offense to keep attacking that defense. Picking it right back where he left up is gonna be yep. huge on this possession. And the nice thing is is that since they were able to get four quick downs on that play, Mike Husney didn't have to sit that long on the bench, so he's just trying to stay loosened up. Yep. And that's the one thing that gives him an advantage, and that is going to be, looks like, from our perspective, that that was going to be a false start on the defense. Ooh, and they gave a false start to offense. And it's now first and 15 for the props. Brown has to stay poised. The game is not over. They still have a chance, but the penalty is not going to help them in this case. Mike Husney will toss it to Messiah Devine, and he will be sat at the 22. That's good for a five yard carry, and it is now second and nine. Great play by Mike Hosney to use his star running yep. back. And now let's see what he's gonna do here on second down. Hosney will toss it to CJ Barrett and that'll be good for another four yard pass. Yep. Hosney doing a good job, a nice quick pass to move some of the chains, keep it going. And it's now third and two. Yep, this is a big third down. Absolutely, and now they're gonna decide whether or not they're gonna run it or whether they're gonna pass it. Yep. And it will be passed, and that'll be good for a first down. And how about a potential touchdown for the Rowan University yep. Frost? Oh my goodness. Yep. Nick Mandiero, the running back, the sophomore, the five foot eight man for the Rowan University props coming up large on the bench. And now it is officially a one possession game. Yep, Braun did a good job having the passing game active. See, that's what happens when you have a good running game and a good passing game. Absolutely. So either weapon, and look at that, a touchdown on third and two. And he was just able to just escape those holes. Yep. And he did a really nice job just going down the field. As Jake Hurdler goes in with the kick and it is good and the fans are loving it yep. here at Richard Wacker Stadium. Now look where we are. Three point game, 10 minutes left, it's a good one. Oh, this is beautiful now. And there's still plenty of time yep. now left. Yep. So this is a big opportunity for the props. Yep. And wouldn't it be amazing if they would be able to pull off this comeback? They were down by 20 in their last game, and they ended up winning 27 to 20 against Christopher Newport, and they scored 20 points in the third quarter. But that would be insane if they would be able to pull off this comeback here. You see, after that first touchdown, the defense is more energized, and then even the offense is more energized. So that's good. They just have to keep the ball rolling, keep keep going, keep being hot, keep stay with it. Yep. And this is where the defense yep. is going to have another big possession here. Hopefully they'd be able to force Donahue to turn the ball over once again. As ten and a half minutes are left. Here in the fourth quarter. TCNJ 
is going to take it at the 35 yard line. There is a flag on the play. Yep. It's going to be against Rowan. Yep. On that hit. And that'll be, yeah, against Rowan on that hit. But that puts, puts the Lions in pretty good field position. Yep. Rowan has to stay poised. Stay poised. Keep playing the way they were playing. Ball will now be at the 50. And this will be a big stop for the props. If they can get them not to score, or if they do score, maybe you try to go for a field goal instead of a touchdown. Donahue completes the pass. Yep. Donahue with a nice pass on the sideline. Jack Covenger, who had that big 46-yard reception earlier here in the second half, gets himself seven yards. Yep. He did a good job of staying in bounds, trying to keep that clock rolling. And it's now second and three. Donahue will give it up to Pacini, and that will be good for a first down. Another carry by him. Pacini so far having a great day. Yep. And now another prof player down. On the field. Just to think though. A quarter ago, it was 33 to 20. Now it's 17 yeah. to 20. And you could feel it, just the energy in the, in the stadium brought life through the crowd and everything. And that's the cool thing about sports is that when you're on a roll, you're on a roll, and mm -hmm. that changes the whole momentum of yep. the game. It's all about getting hot at the right time yep. and just staying on top of the ball. can't tell which player is down on the field. Looks as if it's number 25, Calvin Harper, the defensive back from Englewood, New Jersey, and he will be taken off the field. He looks like he has an apparent arm injury. It's good to see that he's yeah. able to walk off the field. Yeah, I believe I believe it's 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 his right arm. But he looks to be okay. And he will be taken to the side to be checked out. Pacini will go, and he is going to be tackled at the 20 yard line for another first down, an 18 yard rush yeah. for Mark Pacini. That defense has to watch out. They know that TCJ is probably trying to run a little bit of the clock. They have to stop the bleeding. They stopped the bleeding for a little bit, but they also have to do it one more time to give the offense a chance to score and have them on top. And this puts TCNJ in field goal range. So if they could just get a field goal out of this, it would be okay. It would still yeah. be a one possession game. Yeah. But Ron, Ron would like that. Rather a field goal than a touchdown. A field goal would still Absolutely. keep it in a one possession game, and then all they would need is a PAT, and then they would be up by one. Yep. Hosni gives it up to Pacini once again, and he will be tackled at the 17-yard line for a three-yard carry. And it should be second and eight. Pass is completed. Pass is complete. Madness. The madness. And 
and it is now third down. Third and three on the play. And they just need one more play to get a stop. So providing a lot of energy and it is getting very intense here at Richard Wathers Stadium. We've got the wind roaring and the crowd roaring at the same time. <laughs> and it'll be blocked by the props. Great defense by the Roman University props. And it is now fourth and three. And that is absolutely what the doctor ordered. Yep. So coming in for the TCNJ Lions to kick. Oh, it looks like they're going for it. This is a huge call by TCNJ. And, it, and they will be going for it. Wow, I'm shocked. This is huge. And it was going to be blocked again. Oh. And the props will get the ball back. What a big call by the coaching to not go for the field goal. And now the props are still down by three, but they will get the ball back. Yeah, this wrong team is a completely different team that we saw in the first half. You see them more energized, putting points on the board, and they're doing a good job of giving the offense some time to score. Seven minutes left, still a lot of time. Wrong just have to stay patient. This is unbelievable. This would be their second straight comeback if they're able to pull this off. I'm just so surprised that the coaching for the TCNG Lions would want them to go for it instead yeah. of just go for the field goal. Yeah, in my opinion, I think they should have went for the field goal too. That way, they would still need the field goal for Ron and be up. And here is Messiah Devine for a 20-yard carry. The crowd is loving it. First and 10 for Rowan with less than seven minutes to go. Time is on their side and they are only down by three. Messiah Devine is actually gonna be thrown to Elijah Rem. And it is now second and three. Rowan, staying on that high street, keeping it going. They can capitalize. It is now at the 40 yard line. And Mike Husney will get no gain on that. And it will still be, it will now be third and two. He actually does get a yard on that play. I would have thought that I, I, I thought he was going to actually pass it in that uh, during that possession, but now let's see what he does here. Hosni will look for the handoff, and he gets it, and he completes it. That was a nice play. What a great play! Yeah, it looked like he had nowhere to go, but he ended up tossing it. C.J. Barrett. He did a good job of making something out of nothing. Absolutely, C.J. Barrett getting a nice job as the props will get a first down here. And the ball will be at the TCNJ 36 yard line. And that's the thing, Hus Husney was, was trapped and was just able to find Barrett. And Barrett was able to just run down the field all the way to the 36 yard line. And that was just beautiful. Here's Husney again, trying to escape traffic, and he'll be down at the 43-yard line. Yeah, Husney did a good job of being resilient. And it's just, just the energy of this team. You can see the defense energy is carrying on to the offense and offensive energy. Lost a yard, second and 11. He lost a yard on that play. Now second and 11. Four minutes and 40 seconds to go. They are now officially in field goal range. 
which is absolutely incredible. Still a lot of time, still 4.30 left. Hosni getting himself free, and he gives it up to Messiah Devine, and that'll be a third down now. Now with four minutes and five seconds to go, it is now third and eight on this play. Huge third and eight. And you wonder if they do get a fourth down, if they're actually going to go for yeah. it or if they're just going to kick the field goal. But we have to see how many yards they gain on this possession. Messiah Devine, the ball carrier. Messiah Devine will get tackled. Gain of four on the play. And it is now fourth and four. Yeah, I think in this situation, you kind of have to kick the field goal because your defense is playing top notch. So I feel like the defense can give them one more chance. So I think they should just take whatever points they should could get. So now the props will call a timeout, big timeout here, as they will talk over what is going to happen. And Jay Curler earlier today had a field goal that was blocked. Mm -hmm. Like we said, too, he's cut came into the season at 43%. So pretty much I think the timeout is going to be whether they're deciding to kick it or not. Yeah. Well, and this is a big play call by the coaching for the Roman University props because if, they, if they're not able to convert on this play and they do go for fourth down, then they're going to turn it over. Yeah. And that's not what you want. Mm -hmm. And then if they do go for it and they convert, that would be really huge. Yeah. Yeah, Hurler on the season as long as 32 yards, and he's one from three from the 30 to the 39 yard line so that's incredible yep that definitely has an impact on the coach's decision you see they keep the offense out and it looks like they're gonna go for it mike husney will throw it and it is incomplete great defense by the lions as they're able to get a huge stop, Nick Rosso just dropped the ball. Yep. Wow. Looked like it was, a, it was a nice defense on TCJ's end. Um, Husney tried to throw it, but it looked like it might have been deflected. And then the wide receiver still tried to stay with it, but he just couldn't recover from it. Second and eight for DCNJ. Less than three minutes to go as the prop season is almost ready to come to a close. Donahue is going to be sacked, and he loses at least six yards on that play. Great defense by, the, by Rowan, giving the offense another chance. And he actually loses 10 on that play. Yep. It is now third and 18. Yep. The props will call another timeout. Big defensive play yep. by the props. Yeah, let's see and if they can hold off one more play. And if they're able to do that and get the ball back, they can have an opportunity to not only tie the game, but also take the lead. Yep. And, you know, we talk a lot about this props team coming back last week and what was able to fire them up in the third quarter. What do you think is going to be a big if they do score on 
this play? Uh, I think what they got going for him so far is good. Husney's being good throwing, so I feel like just looking forward for him throwing for the rest of the quarter is pretty much where they're going to go. Absolutely. I think it's uh, Mike Husney. We talk a lot about his success that he's had over the past couple games. And he started off a little bit shaky in the first half. And ever since the second half occurred, he's been coming up large. Yeah, they started off trying to run the ball, but they seen that the running option wasn't working too well for them. So they found out a way to exclude the pass the game and get good at it in the game. Andrew Donahue trying to end this. A first down would be huge for the Lions here. And the refs will blow a whistle. And play will resume. Machini will be tackled at the 25 yard line. Big stop by the props. Give them a lot of credit. Yep. You know, what is it? This offense is moving. They should be proud that they got the stop. And to kick a field goal, that would be good, but I'm pretty sure they want to score a touchdown after those last couple of draws. Well, they have to get themselves into really good field position here in this possession and use the rest of their timeouts. Well, actually, they don't have any timeouts left now, but they have to use the rest of the clock to their advantage. Yep. So, you know, they were down by, they were down 14 to three to start the game. They had plenty of opportunities to score in the first half. Yep. And now they're putting in, them, in themselves a, in great, a great position to try to go for the win. Just to think about it, they would have capitalized on one of those opportunities. If yeah. either a tie game or if you win it. Yep, exactly. So they're going to punt the, the ball. Coming in to catch. The return is Nick Rosso. And that was a really nice punt yep. by the Lions. There's exactly two minutes and 15 seconds left. It'll be first and 10 for the props at the 30 yard line. University props offense and offsides are going to be called. There should be a false start. Yep, that's not the way they want to start this drive. That was definitely on the offense, and now it'll be first and 15. Ball will be now back at the 19 yard line, and Husney will complete the pass, and that'll be good for a first down by Nick Maniero, who's had himself a big day, literally just in this fourth, in, in this fourth quarter. A 12 yard gain for Maniero. And Messiah Devine could not catch that. And it is now third and three. Yep. Looked like Husney just threw it a little to the right, a little too low for him. A little bit of miscommunication. Yep. And now's the time where their chemistry and their communication just has to be strong.
one minute and 46 seconds to go. Mike Hosny will throw it and it is incomplete. There's also a flag in the backfield. the penalty is declined. It is now fourth and three. And this is where the profs need to come up big as the game is now officially on the line. Yep. Yep, they have no timeouts left. They need to. Let's see what they do here. A minute 41 to go. Mike Hosny passes it and it is gonna be caught for a first down. Nick Maniero coming up large in this game, yep. and he gives the props life. Yep. He's come up big. He scored that touchdown the last, the last uh, possession. Caught his major first down to keep this game alive. See how the props keep going. Let's see how their momentum carries them into this last minute. Unbelievable. 94 seconds to go. The props are still in this. And this would be incredible if they were able to pull this off. Yeah, it looks like he's a little hurt up, shaken up after that catch. Yeah, man, the arrow sitting down there. No timeout was called, but TCNJ will get a free timeout from this. Just to tighten up on the defense. But what an incredible catch by Manny Arrow, just providing the props some sort of life and giving them a big opportunity to come back in this game. Yeah, this team just looks like a whole different team from the first half, offensively and defensively, but mainly in offensively. Offensively, they didn't score not one touchdown, but they have, they have two in the second half. So it's good to see that they got the ball rolling finally. Maniero will now be off the field. He gets a standing ovation, and he will be headed to the offside. A minute 34, Mike Cosney gives it to Messiah Devine, and Devine will be tackled at the 45 yard line. A three yard gain from Messiah Divine. The clock is still winding down. A few more yards and that will put them in field goal range. Here's Mike Cosney. He's gonna run the ball and he is gonna be out of bounds at around the 35 yard line. That is a first down for the Bronx. He did a good job of stopping the clock at the same time. Absolutely, and I think that that was the goal there yep. that Mike Husney was trying to accomplish, just to try to get themselves as much time as they can yep. to stop the clock. So now they're officially in field goal range. Mike Husney passes it and it's incomplete. Yep. Great Pass defense by the Lions. Luke Young, the defensive back for the Lions. Getting some great coverage on Nick Rosso. And now it is second to 10, with a minute four seconds to go. The ball is at the 35 yard line, and the props are looking to score. Mike Cousin, he gets himself out of trouble. And he is going to be running the ball all the way to the 20 yard line. No, good job. He has great awareness. He runs out the sideline once again after completing the first down. Back to back plays where Mike Husney was just able to get himself out of traffic and run the ball for a first down 
And now the ball's gonna be at the 23 yard line and he stops the clock once again. Yep. 57 seconds to go. TCNJ still has three timeouts left as Messiah Devine will carry the ball and he'll be taken down at the 15. We gotta hurry up back to the line. Time's still ticking. Second and two. The clock is still winding down. Mike Hosny, he passes it and it is gonna be no good. No whistles on the play. And it is incomplete. So now it's third and two. seconds left to go here in the fourth quarter. Props trail by three. The pass is complete for a touchdown. Yep. Mike Cosney coming up large. And the props are up by three with 28 seconds to go. Can you believe it? Yeah, Cosney did a good job of giving the wide receiver a chance to even catch the ball. He left it in the air long enough so the wide receiver could jump up and try to catch it. The wide receiver did his job. Good catch. This is incredible. After being down 20 to three here in the second half, they're able to come back and score 20 points here in mm -hmm. the second half. Yep. And now they're up 23 to 20 and this extra point will be huge. And the extra point is good. Yep. So now TCNJ has to get a touchdown yep in order for them to take the lead. It's gonna be interesting to see how TCNJ bounces back. The offense hasn't really caught up, caught any type of momentum in the second half. Rome's defense has had all the momentum. Let's see if their defense can carry them to the victory. 28 seconds to go as the Profs fans are just loving it here at Richard Wacker Stadium. It is cold, but man, is it getting heated here. Yep, at that the is same true, time. that is true. <laughs> Twenty-four to twenty, and the props will kick the ball. Like I said, TCNJ does have three timeouts left, mm -hmm. so they will absolutely yep. use that to their yep. advantage. But if the props play defense, they win. Mm -hmm. And these are moments where Sonny Tap and Anthony Larosa have come up really large for this props defense. And if they can pull a stop here, they'd be able to pull out a big victory. Here's the kick. And the ball is gonna be caught at the 20 yard line. And number 18, Michael Weiss. Get sacked. So 24 seconds to go. And a timeout is called. Here comes Donahue. All eyes are on the Lions. Donahue is gonna be passing the ball, and that'll be caught at the 40-yard line. Pass was caught by Vinny Guckin, as they will call a timeout with 14 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Yep, that's gonna be a key to look out for. Those two timeouts they still got, so ju just in case they don't get out of bounds, they can still use those to their advantage. And Nasir, if you're the props, and, and you're trying to get a big stop here. Vinny Guckin has to be the man that that TCNJ just can't throw 
that they just can't throw the ball to yeah. in, this, in, in this possession. Rowan knows that the pass is coming. They just have to watch out for it. So pretty much I'm pretty sure the game plan that they have is to watch out for all those wide receivers. Like you said, Gucken is a huge factor. And they still have Puccini in the backfield. And he could come out and catch the ball a little. So yeah, Puccini. Rowan has to have eyes all over the field. Puccini, who had himself over 100 rushing yards in his last game. He's been spectacular so far today. He's not able to get heated up in the second half. Donahue passes the ball, and it is going to go out of bounds. And that will be second and ten with nine seconds to go. The intended receiver on that play was supposed to be number 87, Benny Guckin once again. And the props doing a great job. Playing good coverage on him. Seeing Roman respecting the deep ball right now, backing off a little bit. Donahue. And he's going to be set at the 33 yard line. One second to go. Are you kidding me? And now that'll be their final timeout that they will take with one second to go. Yep. And you would think that they would go for a Hail Mary here. Yeah, they need a miracle right now. One more stop. And the props can celebrate this comeback victory. That'll be one for the ages. They will actually add another second back to the clock. Two seconds will be left to go, as when they reviewed the play during the timeout, there was still an extra second left. So they have enough time to get a snap off. Yep. And Donahue, who has been terrific today, will have one more chance for the Lions. Here's Donahue, the ball is dropped, but he gets the ball back, and he's going to be sad that the game is over. It looks like that, game, that call, that play is coming back. Flag on Rowan, probably going to have one more attempt at it. Not just one more attempt, they're gonna be a little bit closer. Looks like they're gonna redo that. <laughs> Let's see if Rome could bring that same intensity from that last play on his final play. Big penalty call. They did call offsides. Mm -hmm. And it is now second and five. And we're on retracting the deep ball. You know that TCNJ needs a miracle. Here's the last play. Donahue throws a prayer, and it is going to be intercepted. And that is the game for the Frost. And they will just run it all the way down the field and celebrate to victory yep. as they come back and win 24 to 20 here at Richard Wacker Stadium on the last day of the season.
starting. I'll start. Welcome back here to Richard Wacker Stadium. My name is Jason Joseph and alongside of my left side is Nasir Nichols and Sarah Buckley. And guys, what an awesome win this was for the Rowan University Props after being down 14 to three in the first half and then coming into the second half and being down 20 to three and they were able to pull off this win 24 to 20. That was a really huge victory for them. Yeah, I know being down there um, on the sideline, it was crazy energy, awesome fans. The, the crowd was going wild. Um, it was an amazing comeback, amazing end of the season. Yeah, and how about that Rowan defense? They stepped it up, second half, and then the offense came to play as well. It was nice to see the quarterback throw a few touchdowns and carry the win. Yeah, and we also talk about the running game, especially early on for TCNJ. Uh, the props did a really good job stopping that throughout the second half, and that's when the defense really stepped up, and that's something that you really love to see. Absolutely. And the other thing, too, is that um, – Mike Husney really stepped up on the offensive end as well, and he led this team to victory. Yeah, and despite the the many factors, the cold, many injuries, um, it was an amazing comeback. They came back, and I feel like that really um, boosted their morale and really gave the seniors, of course, a, a warm goodbye. <laughs> Absolutely. And then the other thing that was also really important, too, was Jay Curler coming in with that big extra point to not only – uh, put them up by four, but also give them an opportunity to, to win the game in a really huge situation. So, great comeback win for them. That was their second straight comeback victory in a row, and to end the season off of a really great uh, off of a really great finish. And that'll do it here at Richard Wacker Stadium. Once again, my name is Jason Joseph, and this is Sarah Buckley, and this is uh, and this is Nasir Nichols too. And yeah, hope you all had a great great time here. And yeah, we'll be right. We'll be back next season for more Roman football. The props are now three and six on the year. Or excuse me, four and six now on the year as they win today by a final score of 24 to 20. Hope you all have a great night. The following is a presentation of the Rowan Television Network.